Joining us on the phones right now, a uh, uh, a guy who's been pretty busy himself, uh, going out campaigning, doing a a uh, couple, at least uh, at least one or two debates out there. It's uh, Dr. Ronnie Jackson, Republican candidate for Texas 13. Uh, Dr. Jackson, welcome back to the show. How are you today? Morning, Chad. I'm doing great. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. Well, it's uh, uh, you know now we're 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 getting closer and closer uh, to that July 14th runoff. Uh, what, as you've been traveling throughout the you know the you know Texas 13th congressional district, uh, with everything that's going on in the news right now, you know with you know the 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 protest and talk about reforming police. I know the president's going to come out today and have an executive order. What are folks in the Texas 13th Congressional District saying to you about everything that's that's going on? Well, I think folks up here really uh, are just, uh, uh, they're frustrated with it. They're done with it. They uh, they don't support what's going on right now, to be honest with you, because, you know, whereas uh, this, uh, you know, the death of Mr. Floyd obviously was a horrible thing, and nobody, uh, nobody condones, uh, you know, what they saw in that video. This is not about the death of Mr. Floyd anymore. This is about uh, anarchy and and stealing and looting and and, and, you know, and, and victimizing law-abiding citizens and small business owners. And, uh, you know, I think folks up here look at it and they see what's going on, not necessarily here in the 13th Congressional District, obviously, but stuff that's going on in other places of our country right now, and they're just disgusted with it. And, uh, you know, we're just thankful it's not happening here, but we, yeah. you know, most folks out there are pretty, pretty, pretty put up, with, uh, pretty, uh, d- pretty done with it. You know, you've got the I know uh, Republicans in the Senate who are working on a, on a reform bill. Let's say you were in D.C. right now, uh, you know, in in Congress. What are some things that that maybe you would like to see? What are some things that you think uh, would, would fit well within a a reform bill? Well, I don't know. I think they just, you know, I think what they're going to do, and I don't know this for sure. I did talk to the president uh, extensively on Thursday. I met him in Dallas when he came to Dallas, and uh, I went up on the plane and spent some time with him in the office and then spent the rest of the day with him. Uh, but, you know, we didn't talk specifically about that. The attorney general was there. We talked a little bit about what was going on uh, in the uh, in the Seattle area. But uh, I think that what they want to do is they want to put out some federal guidelines for law enforcement, you know, and it will probably, uh, you know, address, uh, you know, use of deadly force and chokeholds and things of that nature. But I think one of their goals is, uh, in my impression, I'm not speaking for them at this point, but sure. is to uh, come up with national standards uh, law enforcement out there, local, state law enforcement, everybody in the country can get behind and have one standard that, uh, that that's out there with regards to uh, to law enforcement. I, and I think that's what we'll see. But we'll see how it, we'll see how it plays out today. I'm anxious to see what comes out as well. Yeah, I'm visiting, visiting with uh, Dr. Ronnie Jackson, a Republican candidate uh, in the Texas 13th Congressional District in a uh, runoff in the uh, 13th Congressional District. Uh, how's that runoff going? Uh, how, how are things uh, going there? I know your your opponent's taking some swipes at you. Uh, you've had some of the, uh, uh, as, as you put it, the never Trump uh, money that's uh, flowing into that race now. And uh, uh, he's taking some swings at you for saying that uh, you had nothing else to do, uh, that this was your fallback plan uh, to come in and run. Uh, how do you respond to something like that? Well, he's done a lot more than that, Chad. He started recycling all the garbage that the liberal far-left swamp put out against me uh, two and a half years ago when I was President Trump's nominee for his cabinet, for the VA secretary. He has actually started recycling that garbage in this district. So he's declared himself, as far as I'm concerned, he's declared himself as part of the swamp. He's of the swamp. He's for the swamp. We send him back there. He will fit in just right in the swamp. He will be he will, he will be right at home. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I've been all about telling the voters what I can do for them. Uh, you know, I thought up here in the 13th Congressional District, the good folks up here, you know, that I grew up with uh, don't really appreciate the negative campaigning too much. And, you know, I had no intention of doing it. I said from the very beginning, I'm going to stick to telling the voters what I can do for the voters. He should do the same. And then the voters can decide who's going to best represent this district. But he's becoming desperate. I mean, I am taking this race over. Uh, it is becoming apparent to everyone here. We've got the enthusiasm uh, you know, our poll numbers are going through the roof right now. He did a poll last week about three days before he started going negative on me. That tells me one and one thing only. It shows I'm winning right now. And so he's desperate. He's uh, he's desperate, and uh, he's uh, he's really declaring who he is. Well, and and uh, what is what's the game plan as far as, uh, you know, I, I know campaigning looks different today 
uh, than you know maybe it did to, you know uh, before coronavirus. How, how do you get your supporters to show up and vote uh, in, in the July? Because that's what it's all about in these runoffs. You know that that you you, you know you got to get your people out to vote. You got to get them motivated. Absolutely, and I think you know we're going to be surprised how uh, how much this is kind of uh, normal here because I've been, I've been we've been out on the campaign trail for almost three weeks now. We've been doing meet and greets and going to restaurants and cafes, and we've had a couple of uh, fairly big events. We just did the uh, Republican uh, the, the Wichita County uh, Republican Women uh, did a convention or a uh, debate for us yesterday in Wichita Falls, and that place was crowded. It was packed. People are, you know, everybody that I meet is walking up, shaking hands with me. So I'm hoping that, you know, this, uh, the numbers keep falling off on this coronavirus, which I think they will as the weather can, you know, we were in the warm weather now. And I said all along that as the weather warmed up, this thing was going to go away. And I think that's what's happening. And I think that by the time the election rolls around on 14 July, and mind you, early voting starts on 29 June, so two weeks from today. But I think people are not going to hesitate too much to get out and vote. And, uh, and the campaign trail is really looking very similar to what it did before coronavirus right now. You know, one thing that is uh, that, that I find is interesting in, in, in this race is that he, your opponent, he's saying he's the one with the experience, that, that, that he's been, you know, uh, uh, he's been in D.C. before he came back, and, and, and he has the experience. You're positioning yourself as, hey, I'm the outsider. I'm President Trump's guy because the president has endorsed you. For for those who are uh, in the Texas 13th Congressional District and they're looking at, you know, the choices, you, you've got uh, Thornberry who's endorsed your opponent. You've got Trump who has endorsed you. Uh, why does it matter so much that Trump has endorsed you in this race? Well, it's key. I mean, it makes it makes a world of difference because President Trump's about to get reelected. He's going to be in office for another four years. And everyone knows, you know, what my relationship with the president is. He has incredible trust and confidence in me. Uh, I've got his ear. He listens to me. Uh, I have a relationship with every member of his cabinet, with the entire West Wing. I, the big difference between me and my opponent is I can make things happen over the next six to eight years. He can't. He's going to be a freshman congressman to have absolutely no influence. And he does have the experience if you're going to count experience with lobbyists and special interests, because that's who he represents, that's who he is. He spent a lot of time in the D.C. swamp, in the swamp in Austin. I mean, those are his people. That's where he's comfortable. And so he's got a lot of experience with the swamp, uh, but he doesn't have the experience that I have as a leader. I've got, you know, 30, almost 30 years of leadership in the United States Navy. I'm a retired Navy admiral. I'm an emergency medicine physician, and I've got relationships in D.C. that are going to carry this district a long, long way. Tell folks where they can find out more information about you and your campaign. Yes, sir. Go to www.ronny, R-O-N-N-Y, Jackson, 4, F-O-R, Texas, T-E-X-A-S, 13.com. Ronnie Jackson 4, Texas 13.com. And you can find the link to my Facebook and Twitter and everything else there and read a little bit about my campaign. Excellent. Always a pleasure to visit with you, sir. And uh, we wish you the best of luck. And we'll visit again soon. You betcha. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. That's Dr. Ronnie Jackson here on the Chad Hasty Show. News Talk KFYO.